Police officers of Reddit. What was your they could have gotten away with it if they had kept their mouth shut moment? I had a car pass me once. Passenger hangs the upper half of his body out of the passenger side window with his middle finger in the air while screaming. Frick the police. He had my attention for the seatbelt violation. I got behind the car and ran the registration. Registration is suspended. Registered owner's driver's license is attached to the registration and his license is suspended. Registered owner also has two warrants for retail theft. I stop the car. And they both started with the free speech thing and how I can't stop them for giving me the finger or swearing. Which is 100% correct. When I pointed out that I can. However, stop them for the passenger not wearing a seatbelt and for the registration violation. Suddenly they got quiet. Driver got arrested for suspended license and his warrants and the passenger got himself a citation. The driver's vehicle got impounded. Moral of the story, tell your passengers to shut their mouths. Had that guy not been a moron, his buddy would have been homeward bound. Lol. Like the Chris Rock video, how to not get your butt kicked by the police. Not a cop, but a public defender. Had a client who made a long statement that didn't help her case, but the judge was letting her go without setting bail. Before leaving the courtroom, however, I was informed that police from another precinct were coming to pick her up and she'd be held until they did. They didn't get her until much later, but I told her to absolutely not say anything to them, to keep her mouth shut. The next day I go to do her arraignment and I get the notice of any statements, which started with my lawyer told me not to say anything, but this is what happened. Admitted to a variety of crimes. It was frustrating to say the least. Know a police officer, but I do know of this house in my local village that was a notorious drug den. The police came to search the place but couldn't find anything. As they were leaving, the lovely owner yelled at them that they should have brought the drug dogs. So yeah, they came back a few days later with the drug sniffing dogs and found huge amounts of drugs hidden away. Absolute morons. This one made me laugh. Not me, but my boyfriend. BF's working overnight when a guy comes through town doing 35 miles per hour in a 25 mile per hour. BF pulls the guy over and asks for his documentation, license, registration, insurance. Guy flips open his glove box, snatches his documents out and snaps the glove box closed super fast. BF laughs and says, what do you have in there? Guy gets a little sheepish and says, you know, registration, insurance, whispers, little bit of weed, end whisper, bf, what, guy coughs and says, registration, insurance, and a, a little bit of weed, bf laughs again and says seriously, can i see, guy got a slap on the wrist for being honest and having a very small amount, i was the one that might have gotten away with it, but the cop pulled me over and says, i clocked you going 86, actually, i was going 85, i had the cruise control on, Dot. Yeah, that's still over the posted speed limit of 75 miles per hour. Oh, yeah I guess it is. I know what I'm about son. Don't try to tell me I was going faster. Currently watching Live PD, and the guy told the officer I have caffeine pills in my back pocket gets them out puts them on the hood. Everyone's chill. Dude then comes clean and says it's Molly and the officers look at each other and go do we even have a test kit for that other officer says no dude's face just shows he should have kept his mouth shut. Not a police officer, but my mom once managed to talk her way into a lesser fine for a traffic offense, but wasn't satisfied with that so managed to sass her way right back into the full fine. Sigh. Done that. Go to know when to hold and fold. And sometimes, you learn that lesson the hard way. Okay so we had a DUI accident where a guy kept driving straight into the woods into a tree because his GPS was predicting a future street. He walked back to his hotel room and left his check in papers in the car. So we go to the hotel and go to his room and knock on the door. He did not have to answer, but he did. He was pretty clearly drunk. I ask him if he had anything to drink since the accident. He did not have to answer or he could have told us that he drank after the accident. He said no I haven't had anything to drink since the accident. And where I'm from you have 24 hours to report a property damage only accident. So it wasn't even a hit and run. So as I'm locking the guy up he tells me he's a lawyer. I told him I hope you're not a defense attorney. But in his defense, he was drunk. Michael there's no road here. 
A cousin of a friend of mine travels around the state to take in deadbeat dads. Gets to one place. A 4 year old kid is home. Dad isn't. So the cop starts talking to the kid. Making sure he is okay and such. After a bit of this. Kid says to cop. Want to see my dad's secret garden takes him to a closet with a false back. Opens it up to see a small pot farm. Guy gets home to a few cop cars and a few charges. Good reason to not leave a 4 year old home alone I guess. I've had countless times where dudes give consent to search them or the vehicle and they end up having drugs. It baffles me why you would let me search if you don't have to, knowing there's some dang H in your cull mayo. Not a cop but pretty applicable to the thread. When I was in high school I liked to park in parking spots that cars had parked poorly next to just as a frick you. One time I was at a high school football game and a jeep had parked like crap. He was nearly halfway into the spot next to him and parked at an angle. I was driving a 98 feet Chevy Silverado, big old pickup truck, at the time and I had my brother help guide me into the spot so I was perfectly in the lines. That made it so the driver door was completely impossible to get in. I took a picture for the novelty of it and went on my way. When I got back to my car the jeep was gone and every panel on the passenger side of my car was keyed. There was an officer nearby so I told him about it and showed him the picture. He told me there's not a lot they could do because there were no witnesses but he'd give it a shot. He looked up their license plate, called them and asked them if they had done it. They confessed and ended up having to pay $1,600 in restitution along with getting a felony. Soul bro yo, used to drive an old but Scottsdale custom deluxe and loved messing with crappy parking people. Not a cop either. Friend was pulled over for not wearing a seatbelt while he was with a few buddies. Gets handed his ticket. Guy in the backseat says am I gonna get a ticket too? Officer replies. Well, were you wearing your seatbelt? UHH. Number. Alright. Can I see your id? Not the brightest fellow about. Hey. No fair. I want one too. Pull over this guy for expired tabs. Ask for his id and he's feeling around for his wallet. Can't find it. He says, ah man, I'm one of you, it's cool. Oh, what department? Oh, oh actually I'm a security guard, but same thing, I'm polite, so where's your id? Oh it's in the, and he motions to the trunk. It's in the trunk actually, no, my BS radar is going off, okay, want to get you it out of the trunk? Nah, I don't have it, he starts looking around for another story to use, but now I know I'm supposed to stay out of the trunk. He's also not giving me any more information. No id. Then I have to take you in and get you fingerprinted. I'm going to get into that trunk one way or another he's looking like he's lost. I ask him what's in the trunk. But he's not talking anymore. We pull him out and get him in cuffs. Another officer takes him to get it through fingerprints. Since his car is expired past 6 months California we tow the car. In the process of getting ready to tow the car, we need to take a quick inventory. In the trunk was a police uniform with fake patches and a metal badge. No gun, but a duty belt. He also has stacks of child pee. This is a guy who a neighboring city had been looking for months. His MO was to dress as a police officer, talk to kids and you can figure out the rest. If he just gave me his name, I could have looked up his id and verified he had one. I'd probably have let him go. But. Honestly I'm really happy about this one. Good on you man. So this happened a few years ago. I was patrolling with my buddy at night. It was almost the end of our shift. Suddenly, we get an alert that a local nearby gas station had just been robbed, unsuccessfully, and that the suspect was supposed to pass by us in a red car. Indeed, seconds later we saw a man speeding through the road. Details on the side. We ended up courting him on a dead end street. When my buddy was handcuffing the suspect, I asked the suspect if he had had something to do with the robbery. He repeatedly said I have never been there. Ask the ginger lady. Turns out the cashier that night was an old lady named Marcy, covering up for her ill daughter, whom would have never been able to identify him since he was wearing a black mask during the robbery, which we never found. Marcy had ginger hair. Fortunately, the suspect was kind enough to inadvertently confess the crime. How could he know the appearance of the cashier if he had never been at the crime scene? The jury thought the same. <laughs> Fellow officer stopped a car for a turn violation. Guy is a wannabe drug dealer who we have seen around the bars before. 
We are talking with him and ask permission to search his car. He agrees. I'm bullshitting with him about sports and weather and the officer finds a duffel bag. So I joke and say nothing and they're that dangerous right? Like bombs or grenades or explosives he nods and says, yeah a bunch of dynamite. I'm waiting for him to laugh or smile or shrug or do something that screams it's a joke. Nothing. I say, I'm going to open the bag and look. Okay expecting at any moment he will stop me. He doesn't. It was 8 sticks of dynamite he stole from a construction site. Separate story. If he didn't say anything, I would have ignored the bag thinking it was tools. Some idiots from my hometown broke into a few houses in the early 2000s. Among several stolen items was a handheld video camera. They proceeded to record themselves breaking into several more houses and posing back home with their haul. Several of the items including said camera ended up at pawn shops. Well, when the battery died they didn't remove the tape. As is customary, the pawn shop found a compatible charger and watched the recordings. Copies of their fingerprints, IDs, and the video were turned into the police and these morons went to jail. Almost everything from the videos was recovered from area pawn shops. I'm a nice guy, and I enjoy a chat. You'd be surprised how much this lowers someone's guard. Stood in full uniform. People will just start telling you things that could get them in trouble. Multiple times I had to tell people to shut up. It was usually petty things like where they hid their weed stash. That they'd got a bifter in their pocket for later. Not really worth the time and effort to deal with with how skis we were. One time a guy really got himself in trouble by effectively telling me he had stolen property on him. I had to act on that one. Not a cop but have a buddy that is. Nothing too crazy but he's had countless moments where he's tried to give people a break or all they had to do was sit down and be quiet but they end up talking themselves into jail. Recently had a dude he pulled over that was a bit over the limit but not too much so he was gonna let a friend pick him up instead of arresting him. Guy got to talking and basically revealed driving under the influence was something he did fairly regularly. A single mistake is one thing but my buddy decided the best chance at getting him to stop would be learning this lesson the hard way. Not a cop. I had a roommate in college that was no friend of mine. He got in a fight at a bar and was kicked out. He tried to go back into the bar and got thrown out again, but a cop happened to be driving by the second time. Cop told him to relax or he was going to be arrested. He told the cop to arrest him. Cop handcuffs him and puts him in the back of the cop car. Roommate then started banging on the window. Cop then recuffed him with his hands behind his back. Roommate stupidity carried on for the next couple months. He was supposed to go to court over the whole thing, but didn't show up. Police showed up at his job, cuffed him and brought him to court. Judge told him he would have just received a slap on the wrist, but he now had to send him to jail for a couple days. He was scheduled to report to jail a week or two later, and he didn't show up for that either. By this time, he disappeared. I never saw the guy again. Not a cop but a witness. During college, my friends and I would hang out outside and smoke hooker. Frequently we would invite strangers who passed by to join or campus police would casually chat with us as they made their rounds. So one time a group of freshmen walked past and asked to join. After about 15 minutes the campus police car rolls up and the freshmen get visibly nervous. We tell them calm down, the cops are chill. As soon as the cop gets out of the car, one freshman bolts and makes it about 20 feet before the cop tackles him. We all clap and heckle the kid. Upon searching him, the cop finds a bunch of weed. Then he says, you realize prior to running, I had no reason to be suspicious. I just wanted to talk to my friends over there and points at us. The cop ends up writing a ticket and sends him off. Last night, a dude had a gun inside his house. I asked if the gun was stolen. He said I'm not sure I asked if I could run the serial number. He gives me the shotgun. Comes back stolen from a department store. He was arrested for possession of a stolen firearm. All he had to do was say no. I had no other reason than consent. He wouldn't have gotten away with it. But a patron of the bar that my sister worked at many years ago was stopped by the troopers while driving along next to the highway. In the ditch. His explanation. Officer, I'm way too drunk to be on the road. I said it was profiling. Turns out they were arresting everyone driving on the sidewalk that particular night. Ron White. This situation came from a friend of mine. 
so he lived with three other guys in a four bedroom apartment. One day when only one roommate was home, the police came knocking. They asked if they could come in and search for suspected drug use. Here is where I should mention the roommate who was home was kind of an oblivious shootin' who spent most of his day playing WoW Magic the Gathering in his room. So of course he says sure, come on in having no idea what his roommates have been up to. In room 1 they find nothing, as that was the oblivious guy's room. Room 2 they find a personal amount bag of weed. Room 3 they find a pipe. Roommate 3 didn't smoke. Biddy and RM2 played video games a lot, so it belonged to RM2. In room 4 they find a possession with intent to distribute giant bag of weed. Apparently just a shitload. RM2 told me it was the most weed he'd ever seen in one place, and he was peed because he always bought from someone else. Didn't know his roommate was a dealer. Three of the four get arrested. Only one who didn't was the guy who let them in. My friend was roommate 3. Charges against him got dropped because RM2 fessed up to the pipe being his and got a slap on the wrist. Not sure what happened to RM4. They never saw him again. Not me but my dad. My dad was in an army helicopter unit assigned to local police to search for marijuana plants being grown in the rural parts of my state in the 1980s. One day, they found a decently sized gaggle of marijuana plants located just off the property of a farm. They landed the helicopter on the farm and talked to the farmer, asking him if he knew that someone was growing weed near his property. The farmer got scared and immediately confessed that they were his plants. He was arrested by the police. Oddly enough if they farmer would have played dumb, the army and the police were just going to remove the weed and leave. While I was in field training I was investigating a hit and run. A lady parked her car on the street in front of her house and found it all smashed up the next morning. My field training officer was like, yeah these usually are hard to solve unless there's video footage or we find a smashed up car nearby. We were wrapping up and about to leave when this woman walked up to my window of the squad car and was like I did that. I was coming back to say I was sorry. Case closed. She got a ticket instead of being arrested because I appreciated her honesty. She probably avoided a DUI by leaving the scene the previous evening. She said she had left her friend's house at about 3am and she couldn't provide an explanation for why she slammed into a parked car on a residential street. This isn't necessarily being stupid though. This is knowingly choosing to confess. This is going to be buried but it's funny so here. I was a cop on an air force base in Alaska. Three guys robbed our class 6 store, liquor, and we responded to the store but got caught in traffic at a light on the way. So we were sitting there with lights and sirens on trying to get people to move out of the way when the back door to the car ahead of us opens and a guy gets out and goes spread eagle against his trunk. Confused we get out to see what was up and realize that these were the robbers. Hey chief we got em what? A friend told me a story about when he and his teenage friends had a crappy garage band. They were jamming one night and some family member gets into it with her boyfriend in the house. Cops were called. They stop playing and go outside to watch. A cop walked over to them to find out who they were. One kid straight up admitted that he had been drinking that night. Because that wasn't what the cops were there for and he didn't see anyone drinking. He said he didn't care. The kid took that as permission, walked into the garage and walked back out with his beer. Now the cop cared enough to take him to jail. Absolutely never admit to any crime without a lawyer present. Just because you know you did it and the cops know you did it doesn't mean it'll hold up in court or that they'll think it's worth the time to prosecute it. You don't need them to think you're a good guy who made an understandable mistake. You need to stay out of a cage. Keep. Your. Mouth. Shut. The only word you should be saying is lawyer. Obviously not a scientific sample, but if you watch the first 48 hours, everyone who declines a lawyer and tries to talk their way out of it ends up in jail. Almost everyone who gets a lawyer and exercises their fifth amendment rights walks out the front door as the cops say we know this guy did it, we just can't prove it enough to take it to court. Not a cop but was part of a jury. This guy is being questioned about a rape and he tells the officer that it's all bulls just like the thing 10 years ago. His ex-wife is just a lying bee trying to get him in trouble. 
cop starts looking into his record from 10 years ago and finds out he was under suspicion for another rape but left town before he could be questioned so it got put aside. That prosecutor retired and it was forgotten. New cop takes it to the prosecutor and they reopen that case. We convicted him on all counts and he got 25 years in prison and the new case I believe he plead guilty since he's already facing the rest of his life in prison. Had he kept his mouth shut they wouldn't have ever looked that far back. Now he will probably never leave prison. I'm a police officer in the UK. It was about 2am, which meant street lights were off, as I was patrolling. I saw a vehicle drive with only his side lights on, spun around, pulled them over. I asked for his license and it's a provisional. His co-pilot was 20 and didn't have a license and the vehicle didn't have L plates. This means he's driving otherwise than in accordance of his license and also driving with no insurance, because as if he did have any insurance, driving otherwise than in accordance normally invalidates it. So, I got him in the back of my car to speak to him, start writing out a traffic ticket for no insurance and was going to seize the car and let him off for driving otherwise in accordance. However, as I am writing the ticket, he says to me I shouldn't even be driving this car, my mate doesn't even know I took it, I just kinda pause, I'm sorry, what, yeah, my mate lives just up the road and I was round his, he fell asleep so I thought I'd just take the car and go for a ride, right, I get another unit to go to the address, and the suspect's friend confirms he's not happy for him to be having the car, especially now that it's being seized, so now, Instead of 6 points and a 200 pound fine and a pee off friend, he gets nicked for twalk, taking a vehicle without the owner's consent, driving otherwise than in accordance of his license and for no insurance. He's been to court and received 6 points and just shy of 1000 pounds in fines and costs, as well as a pee off mate and spent a night in a cell. Former cop here, we always had a statement that we used if we ever got in trouble and it applies to anyone. No poly, no waiver. No statement. Basically, never consent to take a polygraph. Never waive your rights and never make a statement. You may think you're doing yourself a favor by answering questions and trying to be helpful but more often than not you'll end up digging your own grave. Be polite about it but respectfully refuse anything until you've spoken to a lawyer. Never consent to take a polygraph. My dad is a decades experienced criminal defense lawyer and a former judge and he told me this. When the cops think you're guilty, a polygraph has two outcomes, lying, or inconclusive. Never take a polygraph, ever. It's not a show of innocence, it's an invitation for someone to tell you they officially can't tell if you're lying or not. Like this video and this good boy will play you a nice song. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video, or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.